<laughs> oh, I told you tonight didn't seem like it was quite right. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. Is it because it's the 13th broadcast? Now, you know I don't believe in that stuff. You know, superstitions and tarot cards and all that mess. I don't know. I don't know. Let me go see if I can find myself. I guess I'm broadcasting. I don't know. Library. History. No, that's not what I want. Your, see, I'll tell you what. I can't. Listen, I can op the problem is almost everything in my life operates by crank. I don't know. Hold on for a second. Let's see if David can find me and let me go in here and uh, give us a break. Everybody, everybody run out to the kitchen, peel a carrot. Let's see if David can find me. I don't know. I guess I'll sing a song while I'm waiting to see if I'm broadcasting because I don't have anything. I don't have anything. Let's see here. David, I sent you the link. Can you he hear me? Can you see me? Go get me. You should you should be able to get you on your uh, cell phone. Oh, my word. Gosh, by gum, by golly. Okay, there I am. Now, let me go. Let me manage. I don't see him yet. Isn't this awful? Terrible. What kind of a dog on? Well, it says that. Okay, that's on. We're going to put that on. What? All right, let's see. I don't, oh, wait a minute. I think we, hold on. He might be, he might, he might. Oh, he's, he, <laughs> he's doing the, he's doing the, uh, he's doing the puppy dog scratch. Wait a minute, David, get back in there. Let me go put this on so that we don't get crack pots in here. <sighs> I don't know. Who broke the lock on the hen house door? I'll find out before I go. Somebody broke the lock on the hen house door. I'm telling you that. Well, I think I threw David under the bus there. Now everybody's gone. David's sound is very distracting. Well, Deb, I'm telling you what, I'm sorry. We this, this isn't an MGM production here. You can you hear him? I can't hear him. Oh gosh, I'm waiting for my screen to come back. David, now you were there a minute ago. No, I, I don't. Oh, wait, here we go. You're still back. Wait, I can't. You guys are, you might as well stop talking to me because it's going by so fast I can't read it. But I've got my TV on. David, I don't have you in my green room. Can't see or hear David. Can't. Oh, you can hear me. Oh. Well, I didn't use any expletives, did I? Oh, I just got a bid on something on eBay. David, get back in the, come out and come back in. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm positive I did not cancel myself out because when you do, it warns you that you're getting ready to um, try, try, try the green room again, David. Oh, there he is. Wait a minute. Hold on. Yes, I sent him the link. Hold on. Maybe I'm just getting. I was scratching at the window. Is he? Are, are we? Are we? Oh, for Pete's sake. We're in. I'm going to go get in my bed. Now I'm in. 
I'm in timeout, or what am I? I'm in the show. Yeah, but your lips can aren't. You hear me? I can hear you, but your lips don't match. Your voice and your lips. <laughs> Just refresh your YouTube. <laughs> not StreamYard. Huh? Refresh your YouTube and not StreamYard. All right, hold on. <clears throat> and I didn't put I didn't put any things in here, so we're gonna get crackpots. I mean, you know, we might get okay. Sorry, everybody. I match. I match. They said I match. You match? I match. Okay, we are at your item number four, whenever you're ready. <laughs> Do you want to keep going? Let's go. All right. We Starting have good it. stuff tonight. I don't know what happened. This starts at 15 doll hairs. Uh, $15 on the Abingdon, not Abington, Abingdon vase. Now, somebody out there, go ahead and Google it for me, because I'm assuming this is from the 1940s, but I didn't look it up. There is a number on the bottom, and the number is 552. So you can look up Abingdon, A-B-I-N-G-D-O-N. Margaret's in at 15. And the Abingdon originally started as... Plumbing works, uh, sinks, toilets, um, you name it. And then when it started to slow down, they started to make pottery and jumped on the pottery bandwagon. And they only did pottery for only limited years. And there's a lot of people that are familiar with them. Marianne Henry's at 35. I didn't so know Abingdon made toilets. I have some Abingdon. There's the balloons again. That's so weird. I don't know how that happens. I don't know. But anyway. But um, what happens is that. They got out of the pottery business uh, in the mid 60s. They stopped and went back to their industrial wares, back to uh, outfitting offices and uh, residences with their uh, porcelain ware for bathrooms, kitchens, and whatnot. So their, their pottery game, bookends, figurines, pots, planners, only a limited time. Only for a limited time. Well, thank you for that information. Everything Dave. is, uh, yeah, uh, the plant did burn down, but it did rebuild. Well, I appreciate the information. I really do. There's the bottom of it. And um, it, it just has a 1940s feel to me. But again, I did not have any time to go digging. Um, I Again, I'm going to let you decide the color. It's really it's really like a dark celery. But everybody has, you know, seafoam, green, celadon, dark celery. Their pottery um, artware was only produced from 34 to 1950. Well, there Other you than that, um, they did fixtures and things like that. Well, this piece, this lovely thing does not have any chips or any cracks on it. And it's a nice big guy. And he stands eight inches tall and uh, about almost nine inches across from handle to handle. And so it's just really lovely. And I guess you could put, I don't know what you're going to put in there, but it really is pretty. I do like the color a lot. Um, uh there's no crazing on it, and and once again, as I said, it's not chipped or cracked. It's really in. It looks like it just came from the pottery store. So they're beautiful. I have some horse head bookends in their uh, in their white. Well, fantastic. Here's your right. here's your pot right here. It's in yellow. Well, I can't see you. I don't have you on. I know, I know but you can see oh. me in the studio. But no, I don't even see. Well, you're behind. Uh, well, I can. Okay, I'll I'll count this down. Um, I'm not sure we, where we are on the bids. Somewhere around thirty bucks or something like that, I guess. But that is guys... called the Fawn F A W N Fawn Squatty Vase. Fawn Squatty Vase. Yeah, they they were only produced from forty one to forty eight. Okay, from nineteen forty one to nineteen forty eight. Thank you for that information. Did you look it up? You looked up the number. I have a Abingdon pottery. Book. Book. Yeah, I certainly did. Well, thank you for doing that on the spot. I appreciate that dearly. Um, David, on the spot. Mary and Henry is still your highest bidder at thirty-five. Okay, so the high bid at thirty-five on the nineteen forties Abingdon base, and we'll count it down ten. 
9876543 and 1 and that is it. David will put the stop in. And um one and what? No way. Look at Jeffrey sneaking in there. I had to refresh my browser. And Ginny Joe, 41. Jeffrey Reed at 55. Trojan, you're after the stop. So Jeffrey Reed at 55 for your squatty base by Abingdon. Jeffrey Reed? Jeffrey Reed at 55. Well, thank you, Jeffrey Reed at 55. And I'm sorry, those who came in after the stop, but I appreciate your bid and I appreciate everybody's bid. And thank you for sticking with us during that little snafu. It's David's turn. There he goes. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. It's shaking bacon. I helped. So uh, this has issues. I'll be, but these are rare. So do I. Um, yeah, well, this is missing its lining. And of course, with the lining, went the label. Give me a start. Uh, your start is going to be, or this start is going to be $49. All right. It's in there. Tammy and I believe this to be uh, Whiting Davis. Oh, uh, here's the lid. Now, of course, I can't really prove that other than the quality of the material I, I'm handling because the lining was torn out. And of course, with the lining goes the label. Right. But here's a very ornate uh, purse closure to the accordion style opening. Ooh. Which is intact. It's now, a purse. What, sorry? Is it a purse? They're asking what is it? It is a purse. Okay. Uh, chain is still good. Of course, when they tore the lining, they took some of the thread, some of the thread tore. So you're going to have an issue there. This does not come without issues because, of course, the lining's drawn. And then a little tear here, just being forthright, but. Just a beautiful, I, I guess this is a somewhat a survivor. But the, uh, is this male, mailing, almost like chain mail design? Is very intact. Just beautiful, beautiful. The mechanism, uh, the closure works very well. The chain is fine, no issues with the chain. You've got questions, David. They're asking if it's Victorian. I'll let you answer that. I do not know that it's Victorian. Um, don't I don't think. think no. Uh, did Whiting and Davis go to the Victorian area? No. Era? I think that was in the 20s, weren't they? Yeah. You. It's Late teens, 20s. Yeah, probably 20s. It's pretty. So that would be late Victorian or early Edwardian? In the late teens, early twenties. Uh, it the, maybe late Victorian, going into the Edwardian, before you know, obviously. And the comment, the thank yous regarding the Abingdon, of course, uh, you're welcome, Scott, and I try to give you as much information as possible. I'm not an expert in this purse. Very delicate. I kind of hate handling it, but you know, it must be it must be handled. But uh, definitely nineteen twenties. Yeah. And I'll show you how it opens again, Lisa. Just accordion this mechanism out. It stretches nice and wide. Of course, the lining has gone, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it opens to approximately four inches wide. 
and I don't want to keep opening and closing. It's very the threading is very delicate since the um, winding is gone. Right. But okay, that is that, and we'll go to Scott for his next item. So David will bring that back at the very end. All right, I've got an Art Deco tidbit tray for you to serve your tidbits on. And we're going to start at $19 on this. And it's really nice, and it dates to the 1930s. So $19, $19 is where we start on the Chrome fold-out Art Deco. And, of course, you already know how these things work. We'll go ahead and fold this one up. Um, I have had I have had two or three of these before in my lifetime and sold them. And each one I've had uh, sometimes has a different design on it. This you have opening bids, but An Angel Burba is at twenty five. Right. Kp is at twenty six. Darlene twenty seven. Let me hold it up and show you how beautifully. Um, what do you call not etched? A machine tooled, uh, engraved. <laughs> this engraved, is yeah. And it's all uh, stainless. It's all uh, chrome. And of course, now I think I said in my opening video, in the preview video, anytime I've had one of these, I have, I've always found them marked on the back of the center tray. Sometimes, you know, for whatever reason, I don't see a mark on this one, so I can't tell you if it was made by Chase or Keystone or one of the other companies that did uh, chrome in the Art Deco era, but. It's in excellent condition, as you can see. So stylish to bring this out in the 1930s and have your uh, cocktail party. Everyone in evening gowns and evening, you know, coats and ties and the way they did it in the 1930s. Such a beautiful way to, uh, to serve your guests, especially if you wanted to do it in a modern way. But even though you have an overall deco design, you still have more of an old fashioned design on the trays themselves. Sometimes it's machine turn or very deco. Mm -hmm. No dents, no, uh, you know, any type of major scratches on it at all. Angel Burb was at 48. And the whole thing will just close itself right back up. You can see the sides. My fingerprints are all over it. Sandwich tea cakes. Miss Lemon, eat your heart out. All right, Ariel Poirot. Darlene Garrett is at 50. We will count this beautiful piece down, and here we go. 10, 9, I'm trying to make up for time. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Yes, Miss Lemon would faint. Kathleen Workman at 60. I'm going to fold it. Your countdown and. Hold it back up. Last second bid, so I will refresh my browser. We'll see where we're at. We love Miss Lemon. I see Kathleen Workman at 65 before the stop. That's Kathleen Workman. Correct. And David, it's Kath Kathleen, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone who placed bids. I appreciate it. Uh, sorry, Angel. And David, it's you've got the floor. This next set of items is going to start at $16. 16 dollars 16 16 Let me get that in, and then I'll make you big. Uh, ready for your uh, dust off the uh, patio yep. furniture for the spring and summer. And we have a set of four glass coasters. All right. With a nice French design. And mm. obviously, I'm speaking of the Fleur de Lis. Ah. So you get a set of four uh, nice stock. By, what I'm saying is that these are uh, not paper thin, these are nice heavy duty. Ready for your patio furniture. Mama T-Bird is at 16. Yep. So you have, obviously, four of these. Um, 
No, there, there is. Uh, no, that's not a bubble. That's actually water. I didn't dry that one all the way. So you get four. There's no chip, no crack. There is slight wear on the bottom. Someone used these, obviously. But other than that, they're ready for your spring outdoor picnic, patio. Just nice, nice to have around. Nice. For your patio furniture. Nice. Nice. It's at 17, you outbid yourself, so you're good at 16. And this measures just inside four inches for the uh, entire coaster, and the inside will measure three inches. So the base of your glass or cup would have to be three inches. And I will count this down for Mama T Bird. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. David, do your fingers for me because I can't. I did for the 3, 2, 1. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. Um, no, no, it's okay. You did indeed. My, my mistake. And. There it is. Excellent. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Patrick. That looks good. KP started at 16, so Mama T-Bird will get that at 17. Mama T-Bird, thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Thank you once again, everyone, for being here tonight. Um, David, I've got a McCoy, the real McCoy, puppy dog, cookie jar, and he is in excellent condition, and he starts at $25. So I'll go solo and let you know right now that uh, $25 is where we're going to start on the... I have it in. Okay. Puppy dog cookie jar. Isn't he cute? He's begging there, but he does not get a cookie. I'll pull his head off in a minute, but we'll turn around every now and then. I want a ginger snap. There's the back of him. Tammy's favorite song. We'll keep going. <laughs> and you guys can all tell me what type of dog it is. I refrain from doing that because... Beagle or Basset? Maybe Beagle. A Isn't beagle he cute? All your ginger snaps. We'll take his head off and let you see. He is chip and crack free. He is... I hear a puppy. <laughs> He's saying hello. He is Mark McCoy on the bottom, as you can see. An American-made McCoy. Cookie Girl, jar. Sing a Saint Bernard. He doesn't even have any uh, crazing on him, and the only thing thing that I think has happened is I believe that cold painted across here was the word cookie. I think I'm not sure about that. Maybe it uh, said OCS. It might have said that. It's gone. But you know what? Get out a lipstick or an eyelash pencil. And draw on there whatever that you want. So we'll back him up again. Now some happy little letters on there. Right. We're gonna zip through this because we don't have any bids. And um, if you're interested, we're gonna start out. What did I tell you? 25. I don't see anybody. I'm gonna wait another second or so, and then we'll move on and we'll go on to David's next item. And we may come back to the cookie jar at the end of the show. I, my favorite thing is, is the his little lips. His little lip right there is the bottom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Isn't that cute? So that's how you know that the lid is matched up because his lips are right there. Karen <laughs> Reese is in at 25. All right, Karen, I'm counting this down. Um, and let me sit myself down and then I'll count it down. Anyone else, if you plan on placing a bid, go ahead and get it in there. Oh my gosh. I don't see any questions. 
At least I don't think we have any. Uh, so we'll go ahead and count him down. Are you ready, David? Counting him down. I'm ready. High bid right now is twenty-five dollars. Ten, nine. You can see how big he is. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Cindy Harvey's at twenty-six, and I see your countdown. There are the fingers. I will refresh for the last second bid. And we will go get you back. All right. Sharon Reese came in at 27. Cookie jar, 27. Thank you, Karen. Uh, R-U-I-Z. David, you got the floor. Thanks, Karen. Thank you so much. And I know I've got And you. the next item I have, uh, okay, think back. Green glass, they call this malachite glass. It's this mm. art deco area. I cannot put a final finger on who made this beautiful, beautiful green piece of glass. It's a nice, short, squatty little compote or candy dish. Oh, that's pretty. It is gorgeous. It does <laughs> not flow. Got a little slag feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, just pretty, pretty, pretty. I'm not even going to be mad if it doesn't sell because. Did you give me a price, David? I didn't play nicely. It, this is going to start. It's so rare. I'm going to start this at uh, 39. All right. Hold on for a second. 39. 39. Never seen it in the wild. Got it. Uh, I've seen a few references. Um, I see much higher, I, of course, they haven't sold, but someone has this um, listed in several um, places for higher than that, but I'm going to give everyone a chance to get this. So this is going to start at 39. Very, very, very pretty. Uh, at the widest point, uh, ruffle to ruffle, you're looking at eight and a half inches, and it's only going to stand uh almost three inches That's really beautiful. like two and a half and wouldn't this look nice on one of the smaller black bases? Oh, absolutely it is for kathleen's at 40 unless i'm missing something this is glass yeah this glows just by itself uh it does not have any um Anything to make it glow, obviously, but look how it catches light. Just the different hues of the green. Very nice glass. Um, they call this malachite glass. Right. Design. Yeah. yeah. And just the different hues. It, it just has that nice cloud where it just mixes in. Even look, even the bottom is stunning. You, I mean, you're not going to see the bottom much unless you display it on a some type of rack. Good idea. Black black li licorice jelly beans on a black base as well. Yeah. I don't know if I have a base that would fit this. A lot of the bases that would fit this that I have. Just, it just this doesn't sit too high like a vase would, um, so it's gonna look funny with a one and a half to two inch base with such a short. Let me show you how, if you can see this, how uh, on some of the edges it's very opaque. Yeah. Trojan for you is saying that it may be Fenton which maybe the base gives that away. I think Trojan might be on to something. But probably very limited stock. Um, I do have, I want to show the edging and not to blind anyone, but on the edge, you can see that light coming through from yeah. my phone. 
Wow. So you have the slag where it's cloudy and my light disappears, but on the edges you see where the uh, green or shines a light through. Beautiful, beautiful piece. And I will count this down. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Never seen that ever. And very unique. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous piece. There's a stop. Oh, no. My work. I guess I should leave that my work email up because that's where my link is, but it makes all kinds of noise. Um, I see Kathleen Workman at 55 before the stop. I know she didn't mean 550. Um, she will get that at $55. Thank you, Kathleen. Yeah, you know what, David? When we go off screen, I'm going to go dig out some of my Fenton books. That might be, I, I'd love to know. There's something about that. I agree with the, the folks who chimed in. I don't know, something, there's a Fenton-esque. But this, the fun thing is, gosh, we're always learning, aren't we? Oh, it's yeah, every day, yeah. Lifelong, you talk about lifelong learning. Sometimes you don't, you feel like, you know, you wake up in the morning and you go, ooh. Mm. And you don't always feel like you have a reason to get up, but um, studying and learning and going, finding things. It's just, it's so much, it's not just a hobby or, you know, a way to make a living or a way to make cash. It's, you know, just connecting with the past, like with this oil lamp. And we're going to start off Mongolian green. You know what? I think you got it, Urban. We're going to start off at $39 for this. 1880s aesthetic era, um, late Victor uh, you know, Victorian era um, oil lamp. So all original, just the way it should be. Let's talk about it for a minute. Did you have this at 40? I still don't know who the maker is on this. I was thinking Pittsburgh brass glass lamp, blah, blah, blah. But now I'm leaning away from that. I'll let you see the bottom of it first. It is not marked. And I really looked under here to find some kind of a foundry mark on the iron base. Couldn't find one. Maybe you guys know. You have a bit at 51. And that's a... Uh, and so we have an iron base with the original black paint. Nothing has been done on this. Here we've got sort of a custard glass middle piece. Yeah, iron base. This paintwork is original and makes me think of the aesthetic era. I'm thinking of the 1880s. This is glass here and painted. And then as you move up, you have a brass separator here. And then look how pretty the glass oil font is. You've got some... You've got some stylized um, flowers and things. You have a bit at 60. And the tops are always threaded, right, as you can see. And so this is glass here. Um, the top would have had a burner screwed onto it, obviously with the wick to go down here into the center. And then the chimney would have been on it. And with some of these pieces, the globes did not always match the bottom. There could be aftermarket pieces. Um, with this piece, you've got the option of turning it into an electric lamp. Now don't scream at me because you don't have to drill it. And it's a safe way of using it. 
Right. There are conversion kits where you just screw in the electric socket. A little wire will come down. You can still put a chimney on it. You could put a fitter and put a globe on it if you want. You know, or you can actually turn this, you can use it as an oil lamp. You could do that. So um, very much 1880s with no condition issues at all. Um, you just need to go ahead and figure out what you want to do with the rest of it. So if you're a Victorian collector, there you go. I love it. Are there any questions, comments, or prayer requests, as we often say? Um, if not, we'll just go ahead and count this down. A wonderful piece of Victorian uh, antique lighting. Uh, 60. We will go ahead and count it down, David. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. By the way, this came out of the city of Philadelphia. 5, 4, 3, Two, one, that's it. I wonder what old Philadelphia house this was in, in the 1880s. What were the conversations? Do not electrify this gorgeous oil lamp. Well, who said don't electrify it? I don't necessarily- Robin agree. Boyd. Huh? Robin Boyd. There's nothing wrong with electrifying it. Electrifying it doesn't change it, doesn't damage it at all, and it can be safely used. So you certainly could electrify this. Um, uh, and it does not alter or, or damage the piece at all. So that's really up to you. Phoenix, yeah, Phoenix, I don't know, maybe Phoenix Glass, Urban. Yeah. Wendy Lex is your winner at 60. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me put, I'm sitting here going, Bleh. let Lindy me, I, Lex. okay, hold on. I don't know Lindy Lex. Let me go and find. Just a few lines above my stop. Okay. Lindy Lex is new to me. So let me chat with Lindy for a minute. Um, and how much was that, David? $60. 60. Lindy, since you're new to me, will you please email me at oldcuriositytshop99 at gmail.com. And I need, not only do I need Lindy Lex, but I also need your real, if you write to me with your real name, but you don't tell me you're Lindy Lex, I won't know who you are. So give me more information than you think I need. Okay, Lindy. Okay, very good. So just send all that to me every... Shipping address, PayPal information, all of that. We'll get together. And it's David's turn, so we'll... we'll. And I didn't mean to uh, cut off whoever it was who said... I hope I didn't sound snarky with... Um, I was not trying to be disrespectful in any way. It really does not hurt this piece at all to put the, uh, the light bulb on top of it. It's a safe way to use it. Um, you know, and who sits around with oil lamps burning at night, you know, but you could either way. So just want to make sure I didn't offend anybody. Sometimes I can be a little rough. Hey, I'm Jersey, but um, electrifying it won't hurt that. Okay. And it's totally reversible enough. David, your turn. This next item is going to start at $17. And here you go, buddy. How about a treat? A treat for the baby to keep him quiet. So this is a 100 year old, all perfect mason jar. Now, it does have a zinc top, but it's the, it has a hazel atlas glass lid. So this is like a little marriage. May you repeat the price again? I'm 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 sorry. Uh, Seventeen dollars for the start. Okay, let me. St oh, that's I'm saying that because you have um, a 100 year old piece of glass here. This is not a crack. These are straw marks. Two straw marks here. Thank you, Robin. Nice ball design. It's number nine or number six. Not sure which one that would be. It's 
So you have a straw mark here, and then uh, during the press, this uh, double, it starts as a single straw mark, and then it doubles. It has a branch where you have two branches here. These are not cracks, it's just during the manufacturing process. And you can tell by the design of the ball, uh, the age of this. So this would be, this would have been, man, the jar itself would have been manufactured uh, between the years of 1910, 1923. So at its, the youngest will be obviously a uh, uh, hundred years old. David. Yes. May I uh, jump? Uh, lovely, lovely, lovely. I love this community. You have bids, but let me jump in for a second. Oh, it disappeared. Sure. Um, wait. JJ no. McLean. No, no, no. Hold on for a second. I just want to bring in, for the sake of all of us who are learning. Right. And um, I just brought it back. It should pop on any second. I don't know why it disappeared. There it is. Uh, you can see. Okay, so. J.J. McLean must have done some digging, and you can see there. Okay. Thank Wonderful. you. You see That's that, David? Great. I see. Nine, wow, that was only a limited production then. So everyone who had a Fenton feeling, there you go. Okay, I did not mean to interrupt, but I always love to learn, and I, I learned from that, and I want to thank you, J.J., for telling us about that. And back to David, I'll be quiet now. No, it's okay. So I see the beds, and I just want to reiterate that you had, do have a lid that um, has a hazel atlas lid. And I'll show that off because it's a two-piece lid. Uh, you have the zinc lid that, of course, is hollow. And then the hazel atlas glass button that goes on top of the jar, which is handsome in and of itself. Oh, that Fenton feeling. <laughs> oh, that Fenton feeling. You do have bids on that, David. Okay, I will count it down. No, I'm not rushing you. Well, that's how we move them. Well, that's true. People know that. Yeah. So this jar, obviously, at its, it's, it's at least 100 years old. But these start, they manufacture this, this design. The manufacturing began in 1910, but it's as young as 1923. So I will count this down. 10, 9, 8, mm. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. I have plenty of jars, so if you're interested, just send me an email, and Scott will have the stock. Yep, I'm getting ready to. I see David on the screen now going three, two, one, and the stop is in. It's definitely a seven to eight second lag. Yeah. And I see Kathleen Workman. I didn't see a last second bid, so it may be Kathleen. This guy wants a little treat. I'm not going to give him a treat. Well, let's see the pup. You want to show the pup when we're done or show him now? Right. Kathleen, that's yours. There he is. Where is he? He's here. Oh, there he is. Hey, sweet thing. Say hello. Say hello, Jack. Bless his heart. He was and he was abandoned, and you he guys. Abandoned. Someone got rid of this little guy. His training is coming along nicely. He's Bless got right now. Bless the beasts and the children. I think he is a Chihuahua Jack Russell mix. He has all the energy of Jack Russell, and he has a lot of the shorter snout and the floppy Jack Russell ears. Well, he's as cute as he can be. And I don't know about the rest of you in this country, but here on the East Coast, we are having wind today, which is not quite nor'easter, but woo! We've got, it's, it's, it is windy here. And just so that you know, where I live in New Jersey, I'm 60 miles from the Atlantic Ocean. So literally I jump in my car and uh, if I speed within 50 minutes, I'm in the Atlantic. 
but it's windy here on the east. Anyway, okay, I've got two candlesticks to sell you. And we're going to start off at uh, my word. No? Oh, 20 bucks. I guess I should hold them up. I'm telling you what. They, these are super califragilist. They're 12 inches tall. These are 12 inches tall. Well, Jenny, the wind came from out your way. 12 inches tall on these absolutely beautiful walnut. And I had to study these for a while. Sometimes it can be difficult to tell the difference between walnut and mahogany. And it's not, it's not because of color necessarily, because walnut can be, mahogany can be stained brown. But I do believe these to be walnut, which is somewhat unusual. But I think these date to the uh, Edwardian era. We're somewhere in that era, era. They have the brass inserts. Beautiful. They've got the old green felt on the bottom. They have their original finish. And they are a generous 12 inches tall. I have always had a thing for wooden candlesticks. Um, Macy's at 25. Anytime I can find a pair, I always buy them. And... Um, they have their original finish. I guess I should zoom in a little bit and see, let you see how pretty the wood grain is. We'll go all the way up. To the very top with the brass top. Patsy M at 40. Yeah. Um, Jeffrey reminded me, it's not St. Patrick's Day. I can't tell my joke. Don't give my joke away, Jeffrey. <laughs> well, I might as well tell it now. That was my father's old joke on St. Patrick's Day. The only thing Irish about me is my patty o furniture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, anyway, uh, wooden candlesticks that are just lovely he's here all night folks i'm here uh, well i'll tell you what what time is it oh it's quarter to ten let's count them down uh ten is it windy up there in north jersey donna ten nine eight seven six five four oh three two one and you have permission to repeat that joke but please give credit to my late father my next party i'm going to tell that joke you may do so please do i love these i see a last second bid so i am refreshing the chat here let me see if i can bring david back without throwing us into the ditch again i don't know okay i need clarification because Patsy, is that 89 or 49? Did we mess up here? You tell Where us. I? You just tell us. If, if Patsy was the highest bid, you tell us. But if she outbid it herself. I just want to make sure. I don't, I'm not, I don't uh, want to overcharge. Patsy you. had 89 for the candles from the second highest bid was 49. So I just wanted to double check. Patsy M, I have her at 89. Patsy, you let us know if that's right. If it's if that's not right, you let me know, okay? We'll um if it's not right, Jenny Mac was the first at 49. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Let's let Patsy jump in for hold on everybody. Let Patsy jump in so we can make sure we get it. I don't want, and then we'll go to David. We're doing well, folks. We only have a few items left, and it's not 10 yet. Well, we're doing fine. And we did have a, uh, a unscheduled break. Thanks to me. Well, I don't you know, see Scott, life happens sometimes, and 
We have no control over it. Did Patsy come back and tell us? I don't. And okay, let's... I'll talk to her. I'll get her. Just in case, yeah. Let's let's keep her at eighty nine. Let's put Patsy down. She'll tell me. Yeah. So Patsy M at eighty nine. Patsy M. Patsy, if eighty nine is not right, please tell me, and it's whatever you say it is. Okay. Uh, David Solo, your turn. Go. Thank you, everyone. I have a nice, wonderful, heavy blown glass plum bud base. This is starting at $16. They smooth the ponto on the bottom. They left a little roughness there. That's not a crack nor a chip. That's just a remnant of the smooth ponto. Thank you, dear. And um, it's got one little press here. So a little abstract. It's a little oblong. Very artsy. There's a nice little dimple here. And a beautiful, nice bud face. <laughs> That's nice. I love the color. It's rich. Yeah, gorgeous plum. I didn't put the start in. I apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, sixteen dollars is the start. If you told me that was my fault, you were mesmerized by the color. I'm always mesmerized. And it, it's funny. So these are how your larger vases and bottles start in a little glob like this, maybe with a little more glass, but as they stretch and work to get the design they want. But this was, a, this was a nice little stop where it's a nice stocky little bud base. Nice for a piece of uh, ivy. Oh yeah, obviously. Yeah. Out there. And all the springtime flowers coming up now. Yeah. It's not signed, just a, a, probably came from a, a, you know, there's a lot of glass houses still uh, not signed by an artist. Most most houses now uh, sign their work with a with an etch pen. Uh, so this may be a little older, back uh, in the late 60s, early 70s, when uh, you had several houses blowing glass. A few uh, bubbles caught in there during the blowing process. Hmm. And it measures, let me give you some measurements quickly, and I don't see any pins on that, but it uh, measures, it's a little oblong, so it's three and, a, three and a half inches wide at one point, or three and three quarters and three and a half inches wide, and it only stands two inches tall, so it's not going to take up a lot of space on a shelf. Yeah. That would look great in a window, that would just pop in a window. It could have been a blower practice piece, but beautiful nonetheless. <clears throat> see a bit on that, so we will pass on that one. Yeah, I'm looking. I'm not sure if I see one or not, David. Rooster? Uh, this is a uh, EAPG, call it a fruit fruit bowl. Um, let's see. Uh, what do you want to start that at? Good grief. We're just, we're going to start at $15. Now, you know what? I'll tell you what. This thing has no damage, and this was made by the Cambridge Glass Company. $15, let me give you the measurements. From here to here is nine inches when I really spread it out. So 
nine inches across the diameter. Let's double check it in case you don't think it's accurate. Johnny on the spot, nine inches across. My father taught me that trick a long time ago. And then the height, you'll always have a ruler with you. Seven inches tall, seven by nine, made by the Cambridge Glass Company, EAPG. There's no lead in it. There usually wasn't lead in pressed glass. Not true for American Brilliant. Man, he's at 20, KP's at 21. Has Scott sold the tall deco vase with two little handles? Yes, he has. If you're talking about that one, I did sell it already. Sorry, dear. Oh, Haley, you missed it. Um, now, you know, the Cambridge Glass Company goes back to 18... What year did Cambridge start making glass? In the 1880s? A lot of us think of the elegant depression etched glass of the 30s, 40s, 50s. But Cambridge was in business, good grief, in the late Victorian era, if I remember right, but who knows? 1873. 1873 is when Cambridge started? Yeah, that's when they were chartered, yeah. That's even a little earlier than I thought. I'll stand back up and let you look at the Hob Star, which is that thing. Wait a minute, <laughs> right there. And these panels that go up and down. And I want to, um, I, I never do not want to give credit to folks who help me, but um, I sometimes hesitate mentioning names because I'll either mess it up or forget. But a lovely a viewer wrote in and said, hey, that's Cambridge, blah, 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 blah. And I looked it up and guess what? That person was exactly correct. So whoever you are out there, you know, I learned so much from viewers. Okay, so oddly enough, it's not chipped anywhere along the top or the bottom. And it's a nice size for smaller homes or, you know, you just don't want a great big, huge 20 inch uh, fruit bowl on your dining room table. The fruit doesn't spoil as quickly in something as small as this. Count, it, 40. count it down. Uh, 10, 9, 8. This would, you could get a lot of Tam Tam juice in there, couldn't you, David? Oh, yeah, plenty of Tam Tam juice. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, three, a two, a one, and that's it. I have never had this piece before. Cambridge. Nothing like this. Well, I'll be quiet. Let's go. Please send the black glass vase to, hold on. Lisa, I saw that, but could you, you're going to have to, um, maybe they can put in the email to you. Yeah, just, that's good. Cause anything that you really want me to know, send me an email. And I saw something Lisa, but it went by. So we'll talk. Um, Connie bear Masio at 50 for your EAPG. Do I know? Connie or Masio. I do, because Connie, I just put, but you didn't have Masio on the end of your name the last time. You've bought for me before, and I sent you. Wait a minute. This is my. <sighs> Connie, I know that I've got you. C-O-N-N-I-E. Bear, right? B-E-A-R-E, -E, something like that. But I never wrote down the rest of your name, but you've got something coming. And I know you haven't. There you are. Well, OK, David, it's your turn. And you've got one more, two more things. Um, Keep the ball rolling. It's only. Yeah, I have one more thing. This is the 10th item. But then I have something I can bring back. So OK, Connie, I, 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 you're right, Connie. I've got your info. Thank you, dear. I've got you. OK, MCM fans. 
Ooh, what price? Don't forget to tell me. This is starting at $69, and I tell you why. At 69 69 Oh, happy 69 Well, let me get... It's a rocket lighter. Oh, <laughs> and you... Oh, dear. 69 Okay, there it is. You it's missed... a rocket lighter by the uh, Bronica. Bronica. Company. They made several lighters. Um, it's got a chrome top, uh, metal rocket. It takes C batteries. Let me show you. I do not have the lighter fluid in here for obvious reasons. But Randy, leave here. me alone. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeffrey. So the dial, this increases the flame. Um, I hope I can show this. Let me put the, the I'm going to put the tip in the camera. Be quiet, Kate. Because I want to show you. Now the being... mechanisms work. I just don't have lighter fluid in it for obvious reasons, but. They're being very, the audience is being very inappropriate, David. But you're that's the one, okay. who, you're that's the okay. one who numbered that 69. That's, that's I, right. I, I, I did not, that was not 69, and then it's a phallic rocket, right? Well, so pay I, attention, ladies and gents. Well, it is 10 o'clock, so I guess we're okay. There's the heating element, there's a lighting element there, and I'm gonna press the button. Oh, oh, it lights. <laughs> <laughs> That's the heating element to light the uh, fluid, and then the base, the light lights up while you're doing that. So that glows red. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! You're not uh, going to get that. You're not yeah. going to get that on another show. Oh, I need to go lie down. I can't. <laughs> Does NASA know this is? David, I'm gonna smack. I'm gonna. Mm hmm Keep keep the ball rolling. I'll keep it rolling. Yeah, you do. Uh, when, you. See, all you have to do is add lighter fluid. I'm not going to send this with fluid. I'm not going to fill this with fluid. But like I showed you, <clears throat> uh, all the elect electric is working again. Let me show the heating element that lights your. That will light the flame. Yeah. <laughs> and the rocket glows. And I'll send the C batteries along with it. The batteries <laughs> are in here. <laughs> no way. Oh, nice. 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 It is pretty cool. Okay, I'll count it down. We have one bid. Yeah, well, uh, on. I think started the bid at that. Judy's at 70, but uh, Jenny Max is in the she bid first at 70. I'll count it down 10, 9, 8, <clears throat> 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. <coughs> I need to loosen my tie. <clears throat> okay. Um, I think you, uh, <laughs> um, you Why see that, that one one? with a bang. Yeah. This, um, pardon? I ended that with a bang, didn't I? Uh, Jenny Mac at 79, I believe. No, Melody at 81. Wait, before the stop, she's now... Okay, Jenny Mac at 82. Melody, you just missed your bid at 84 after the stop, so Jenny Mac will get that for 82. 
Thank you, everyone that bid. Thank you for everyone that made jokes. Oh, it ain't going to rain no mo no mo. It ain't going to rain no mo. How in the world can the old folks tell? <laughs> it ain't going to rain no mo. Now, this is the last thing. I do have one surprise item, but I don't know if we have time for that. And let me remind everybody who bought something tonight gets a little squishy. Don't forget, you're getting a little squishy star in your package because you are the star. You said package. Okay. Do I have, am I solo again? You're solo. The la you play with you yourself for now. Uh, we're starting at $20, $20 and you're getting two things for one price. Go ahead, David, tell the story. Ah, so was it the never-ending antique store in Cincinnati, Ohio? Indeed it was. We were at this place for eight hours, including standing in line at this ever-popular antique store, and I found this exact same face, very unique. You don't find the shape a lot. And yes, uh, two I'm, minutes later, Scott finds the same base. But I'm I'm going to interrupt here. I was hovering in on this black glass base. David saw me through his peripheral vision, which he developed during his marching band days in high school. Little does he know I have peripheral vi uh, vision as well. He said, Scott, look at that jadeite. I averted my gaze into, an op into another direction. He snatched it. We went to the very next booth, and I found another one. So, ha ha, David. That's the way. We were meant to have one. He may not remember the way. Anyway, enough of the silliness. You get the Art Deco vase and the black glass base, both for one price. There's a tiny little crack at the very top of this, but this is made in Japan in the 1930s, and it has uh, some luster wear on it. Huh? And so I'll show you. Now, I, I just wanna make sure you can see, uh, we'll turn it all the way around, so 1930s. This is uh, Noritake, did I not tell you that? Uh, you did in your preview, but not not for the item just now. Did you like the meme that I made of your lovely wife? Um, it was lovely. So you have the more 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 more, more brothers Noritake, and because it says made in Japan, it was manufactured after 1921. Okay. We have a bid at $38. At the top, there is a little, and I already talked about this in my preview video, but just in case, there's a little, there's a small crack right here. It does not affect this handle. That handle is not cracked. It's not coming off. Uh, just to make sure you know, it displays beautifully. Now I'm tossing in with it a lovely, also from the same era. Now this is pottery. Circa 1929. circa 1929, and this is glass circa 1929, right? So uh, it's a perfect fit. These bases have a little lip around them, a little diameter, yeah. And this base very beautifully fit, fits right down in it. And you know, the nice thing about the black uh, bases, you can use them, you know, all over the house. Absolutely. And, uh, so we'll count this down. Ready, David? Here we go. Five, uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, you get both. 6, 5, 4, Chair is at 40. 2, 1.
I don't know where those balloons came from. It's been a very it's strange. Dean's at 42. Haley's at 47. It has been a very strange night. I don't know where those balloons came from. I didn't do it. Okay. Top chat, live chat. Top chat, live chat. I have refreshed the browser and I have Jenny Mack at 80 before the stop. You said Jenny Mack? Jenny Mack at 80 before the stop. Jenny, thank you, dear. Your snowman base, I promise you, is on the way. Don't ask. That was my fault. And the other things, when I finally fig figured out how to get that invoice to you, you're fine. Jenny's fine. I messed up. Those other things, your flutes, your pink plates, it's all coming to you. So, Jenny, you're, you, if you, listen, sometimes I... But we got it. All right, Jenny. So it's all coming your way. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone who uh, placed bids. David, you have another item, right? Um, I do. All right. It's your turn. Well, no, I have items to bring back. So, Okay. Um, I'm going to take like a two-minute break or a 30-second break. You go ahead and do your thing, okay? I'll be right back, though. Okay. Okay. Just in case someone missed this, uh, right. I'll go quickly. And I have the Art Deco frame, which fits a 5 by 7 picture. It's a 8 by 11 glass frame, reverse painted. Comes with the hanging rack. And this would be $29 for the Art Deco frame. $29. It comes with a photo. Then we have the <laughs> then we have the uh, deco frame. Whiting Davis purse without the lining. And this was going to this was $49 for the purse. Now, it does not have the lining, thus it doesn't have the label. But it, since that was ripped, there are some issues with this, but very minor. Uh, the next item was the plum butt vase. I'm back which is almost four inches wide, uh, three and a half inches, a little oblong with a polished pontoon on the bottom. And this was $16. Oh, Those no. The three items. You're glad I'm going? I don't know. The kids are just enjoying time in the classroom when the teacher is gone. Well, I'm back. That is all. Thank you, everyone. Round of applause for everybody. Are you sure you're back? There you are. Did you... Um, you got everything? Was there anything else you needed to put on there? No. Uh, no. Because we had... Because... We had some weird something. We had like a maybe a eight close to an eight minute glitch there in the middle. So I want to thank everybody who came back. Yes, and hanging in. Now, don't forget if you would, uh, you may want to hit the like button again because we had to start a new show. So the original likes Scott received, he'd like them back for the second rendering of the show. Oh, thanks. But somebody it all said helped somehow. I think you know more of the science than I do, but it, it all helps somehow. I don't know. I don't, it's, it's, I normally don't, uh, 
Okay, so yeah, there were, I'm sorry. So someone, was there, a, did someone want the uh, the purple bud vase thing? I didn't see it on the second, okay. the second rendering, so they can email me if they did. Uh, I didn't see any interest in it. And they'll chime in if they did. Okay, well, so we'll give them a second to chime in. Uh, while we're waiting to see if anyone wants to chime in on that, thank you everyone for putting up with our uh, silliness and our technical difficulties from here, you know, here and there. But um, I know David and I always look forward to this on Monday nights and we thank you everyone. Thanks everyone for contributing, you know, for your purchases, just for being here. And even folks who are watching and never say a word, you know, you're out there. Cause we, we you know, when, when we see there's 300 folks out there, and maybe only 30 people chatting. There are a whole lot of other folks out there that are watching. And we're so right. um, uh, thankful that you are. David, what's coming up this week for you? Wow. So Tammy has a cell with Vintage Conversation Martha tomorrow, beginning at 2 Central. Um, just some items on the lighter side. I think these are items she may have brought back. From, she's bringing back from months ago. So this is kind of like her way of clearing the shelf, so to speak. Uh, then Tammy and I will be together Wednesday night, 7 Central, uh, for our uh, regular Wednesday night show, uh, Vintage Jump Rising Texas. So feel free to join us then. It's all over the map for that show. It could be antiques to MCM to uh, Tammy's Carol Brady vibe. Uh, some toys or a collectible. You never know. You never know what shows up on that show. And I think she is getting with D from Thrill of the Thrift Friday night, and they're going to have a green with Envy cell. So everything green, uh, green items. So if you want to stock up on any green items, visit D and Tammy, and that will be on D's channel. And I believe that will be 7 Eastern. I have to double check the promo, but uh, we'll remind everyone Wednesday night when that will come up Friday. It's a very busy week, and after and then we're going to go shopping at Round Top this weekend. So fun, fun, fun. What's yeah. going on with you? Uh, well, uh, anxious to make the transition into the next season. Um, it's you know we're still iffy with the weather here on the East Coast, but um. I'm looking forward to the flea market season. You know, we have them year round here, but they, I don't normally go during the really, really cold months because there just aren't as, aren't as many folk there. So uh, I'm looking forward to uh, the flea markets opening up uh, or having more, more folks there selling. But we, you know how it is over here on the East coast and the Northeast, the weather is, we're in that, you never know. It's going to be very nice this week. Uh, let's see. Anyway, um, I've got, I'm putting things in my eBay store for my spring extravaganza. So I've got some old antique Easter decorations and some other things that, that are fun for the spring, springtime pottery and that kind of thing. And instead of a live sale, I'm putting all of those in my eBay store and I'm working on those. I put maybe four or five items per day, but I've got other projects going on, things I'm doing, um, well, your uh, the eBay store is alive and kicking for those because I know you did transition to live sales and you have a loyal following with the eBay store and you have been uh, fast and furiously keeping that stock. So that's good to see. Well, I need to do a better job um, because, th th you know, they're just different platforms and some folks like the live sales and some don't. And some like the eBay and some don't. And, you know, I just... We are mute. I'm not sure. I'm seeing the chat, but somebody said we are muted. Um, We're muted. Uh, but yeah. So, well, I guess that's it. I guess that's all. But I want to thank everyone for joining us tonight and keeping rejoining us, joining us and then rejoining us through the technical issues. Right. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. We'll see you.
Thanks for everyone's help and seeing that everyone who bid, Eugene, uh, this this puppy's going to knock over this light. And there it goes. And then in April. Eugenia, thank you for, she got the bud vase. So even make sure you email, email me, okay. Texas at gmail.com. Eugenia, you got that? This puppy. He knocked over the halo light. Oh no, he knocked the he knocked it over. Everyone, uh, if you're interested in the purse or the Art Deco frame, just email me or leave a comment after the end of the sale. You'll be able to leave a comment under, it and I'll get with you. Okay. Thank you, Scott, for having me. Tonight. All right. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Uh, goodbye from New Jersey.